I hear regularly that Conservatives must support a bill like this in order to keep our manifesto promise. But in fact, a conversion therapy law was not part of any party's manifesto at the last election. Forbes magazine's LGBT correspondent actually decried that state of affairs in 2019, saying, quote, none of the major UK parties has listed a ban on LGBT plus conversion therapy as a manifesto policy. So the public has never voted for a law like this, and we're not bound by any manifestos to support this or any other bill. We know that horrendous things happened to gay people in the past, but we can be thankful for good <coughs> legislation which protects gay and trans people from abuse and coercion. But the impression given by those pressing for this law is that gay and trans people are being abused in their thousands by churches and therapists, and there is nothing the law can do about it. But if a gay or trans person goes to a therapist or a church and they really do feel they've been abused, they should report it to the police. If what they heard then breaches that law, the CPS can prosecute. But of course, if it doesn't breach the existing law, it means that whatever was said to them was not abusive. They might have an unpleasant experience, but you can't criminalise unpleasantness. People have choice and they have agency. And I think groups like Stonewall have calculated that a new conversion therapy law is their best shot at silencing dissent. They have realised that a law which prohibits people from suppressing trans identities is effectively self-ID by stealth. Because anyone who disputes someone's trans identity could find themselves having to answer to the police and the criminal courts. If you read very carefully the details of these self-selecting surveys, a very different picture emerges. Many of the people reporting conversion therapy had merely prayed alone that God would change them. Is that what we want to criminalise? Do they expect people to turn themselves into the police for praying for themselves? There's a great wooliness about, uh, in terms of the discussions about banning conversion therapy which is very emotive and often based on anecdote, but that does not provide a basis for legislation. Reference has been made to the National LGBT Survey under the May administration, but what needs to be noted is that that survey forgot to define what conversion therapy is, forgot to ask whether the experience was historic or recent, and forgot to ask whether it took place in the UK or overseas. Legislating for something we cannot define and can't even prove exists is dangerous and does also cut across the European Convention rights, Articles 9, 10 and 11. And it will inevitably mean the trampling over the rights of innocent people. Reference has been made to the Scottish Government, which has spent two years working on a 12-clause bill for consultation and the public perception has been disastrous with front page banner headlines about parents of gender distressed kids facing seven years in jail for not going along with their transition. That government has introduced a very broad law which required the statutory equality body to produce guidance on the law. That guidance says, quote, not affirming someone's gender identity can count as conversion therapy and it is said to be illegal for parents to refuse to support their children receiving puberty blockers. Is this the sort of your law that your lordships want to impose on the population here? A law which takes children from their loving parents for helping them feel comfortable in their own skin or which rewrites mainstream political belief. Religious belief, beg your pardon. But if you're thinking that's okay, we would never have a law like that here. Look at the law in Victoria, which is the template Stonewall uh, legislation. There were no safeguards in the noble Baroness Burt's bill and the fines are unlimited. My Lords, I think there are two options which can be summed up by the approaches of the Netherlands and Sweden. In both countries, legal assessments were carried out to see if a law on conversion therapy was needed. In both cases, the assessment found that abusive practices were already illegal. Both said that sending a signal isn't a good enough reason to legislate. But in the Netherlands, politicians have decided to press ahead anyway. They say they want a new law for situations where, quote, no abuse takes place, unquote, but at least they're honest. Uh, your, your, my Lords, in Sweden, on the other hand, it looks like the government may do the sensible thing and drop the plan. Finally, my Lords, this bill, as currently drafted, 
is a dangerous attack on civil liberties, on religious freedom and on parental and wider human rights. It is socially divisive and unnecessary. Noble Lords must at the very least amend it and preferably reject it.